Today I am getting a beauty procedure and I'm inviting you guys to come share the experience with me because it's something that I know a lot of you guys have questions about. I'll give you a little window into something that, um, that I do that, yeah, involves a little bit of pricking and pain, but um, hopefully you'll enjoy it and learn something from it. So today we're going to Soigne Vu. It's on 65th Street, 4465th. Who I see here is Lisa Hartman and she's amazing, which is why I come to her uh, for all my beauty needs. So let's go inside and check it out. All right, let's do this. Decide to have a dress down today. Hi there, Hi there. Here it is. how are you? We're gonna do everything that we normally do whenever I come in so that you guys have an understanding of you know what it's like to come in. Today my need is um, I need to get my lips touched up. I regularly come to Lisa um, for injectables. So what do you call that? Like what is the dermal fillers? The average patient when you get a full treatment would come once or twice a year, but because you kind of top it <laughs> yes. off. We're more, more of in, in touch-up mode. Sometimes like it can go a little bit bigger. I usually like kind of a natural look, Absolutely. enhanced but natural look. But for me, what I find is sometimes I deflate on one side more than out another. of the mouth mm -hmm. than another. I think it's because I talk out of one uh -huh. side. <laughs> so she fixes me up and has me looking even on both sides. But yeah, I want you guys to see the process, what happens. Come on back. treatment office ever. Most of these products uh, that are made of hyaluronic acid are FDA approved to last up to a year. Using hyaluronic acid not really to, well kind of to replace our own but also to act as a filler to go in and plump out the tissue because we're also you know, missing some of, some of the other underlying tissue. So how do you get like hyaluronic acid that we, our bodies naturally produce, like how do you, how do you put it, like where does it come from? It's derived from nature, from bacteria actually. It's chemically equivalent across all species, so what that means is that we make it, horses make it, um, bacteria make it. So we derive it from bacteria because it's more ethical to derive from bacteria, we can do it in the lab, we can control it goes over the lip area and it just gets me all numb it's I would say once it's you know fully uh, working that I mean I can sort of feel the injections but not in a way that makes me cringe or anything like that but you do have to wait a little time while it while it sets in so I have the numbing cream on I'm starting to feel a tingle a little bit and yeah, what do we wait? 10 minutes? Yeah, about 10 minutes. This is a 23, um, 7 percent uh, mixture of lidocaine, tetracaine. <laughs> <laughs> it works pretty rapidly. You wouldn't want to leave it on too long. Your lips will feel like they're really big, but they're not. My whole thing with filling the lips is if you go slow and you take your time, it's really not that uncomfortable. I have some patients that will come to me saying, oh my god, it's the most painful thing I've ever had done. And I'm like, <laughs> it was painful before when I went to someone else for this and then when I met you and started coming to you I realized like you're so patient you're so delicate mm -hmm. um, you, you talked to me throughout it mm -hmm. that um, it doesn't it doesn't feel as bad as it, it used to. I think a lot of it has to go with taking your time mm -hmm. you know it's not a procedure that is meant to be done in like five minutes. Mm -hmm. And you always say like right before you're about to inject it, it's like <laughs> little stink. <laughs> That's my like, thing. It's so cute. Everybody knows that. Yeah, so this is the Restylane family of products. Galderma um, is the manufacturer. So Restylane Silk, again, is the lightest weight. I think it's interesting, like, a lot of women don't really want to open up about what they do. And mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've never hidden it, but um, when, when people ask me about mm -hmm. it, I'm very candid. And I don't really think that there should be that much shame in it because right. most likely um, everyone that's not talking about it is getting it. Beyond that, I think, you know, we all talk about empowerment and how it's so important to feel like, you know, you're putting your best self forward mm -hmm. in every situation. So, um, looking good is different for every person. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm starting Feeling to feel nice and numb. Good. Get my hair out of the way. Moral support ball? Oh. <laughs> Squeeze it when I have pain. <laughs> Okay, so basically what I do is I just follow the vermilion border here. A little pinch here, one, two, three. And tent the needle up to make sure I'm in the right position. You can see how it turns a little white. 
and then detent and then slowly inject the product as you come back. The important thing is your push of the product. Make sure it's nice and even. Comfortable? Mm-hmm. Another little pinch, one, two, three. And then you basically just want to trace the line where you place the filler so that they're slightly overlapping all across this vermilion border. So the vermilion border is what really gives the definition and shape to the lips. Some people, when they get lip fillers, they just, you know, they take 10 minutes, they plump up the meaty part of the lip, and I find that that actually works against you in some lip shapes where it'll actually flip the lip in. So it's really important to redefine the vermilion border before you plump out the lips, especially in your patients that are a little older and have lost some of the definition. You have to recreate that solid structure. It's like the foundation of a house. You have to have the foundation before you can put your furniture in. Finish. So some people call this pillow filling. You're filling in the pillows or the fat pads of the lips to give them a nice plump. And one more stick here on the side pinch. No pain at all. I don't feel it. Good. Pinch one, two, three. So the one thing that makes your lips really easy to inject is that you have a nice strong vermilion border. Some patients that, you know, especially when they get a little older and then they decide to do fillers for their first time in their lips, they're a little more, they pose a little bit more of a challenge because they have to recreate that structured border in them. And it, generally speaking, takes time. You know, their first treatment, they'll like it, but they'll like it even more after they've done a few treatments because you've recreated that structure over time. And that's one of the things, and I don't really like to bring celebrities into this, but it's one of the things about Kylie Jenner's lips that is important for people to understand is she didn't make that transition from a very thin upper lip to what she looks like now mm -hmm. without doing serial treatments. When you say serial, how often is that? You know, it, it's hard to really say with her. I would imagine every couple of months she went for a very small amount, kind of like what, how we've it. done it with you. And when I have patients that come in and they're looking for that look, it's a tough conversation, especially in the younger crowd, because they want to, you know, see that instant gratification tomorrow. And it's actually not good. It's like, it's the same concept as when you get, um, when you get uh, breast implants. You know, you can't go too big too fast. What happens is you stretch the skin, you get stretch marks, and it's better to go slowly with these things. It's one of my favorite areas, is, is called the Cupid's Bow. I'm gonna redefine the Cupid's Bow. Just to give you that M shape there. You already have a nice solid M, but I'm just gonna slightly accentuate it. One, pinch, one, two, three. Sometimes this makes people sneeze. Same thing here. Alright, so never fill the top without the bottom. Your lips should be proportioned. Top should always be a little bit smaller than your bottom in most people. And I find in Caucasians, that is pretty typical. Mm -hmm. With African-American patients and some Asian patients, it tends to be a little more 50-50. Mm -hmm. Part slightly. So again, to get that more pouty look, I tend to focus more on the central portion of the lips. So I'm on the bottom right now, I'm filling in the pillow. They're always going to be a little swollen after the yeah, procedure, yeah, yeah. so I will make sure to show you a picture um, tomorrow of what they look like. But um, yeah, don't expect to like walk out of the office and look like you haven't had anything done. <laughs> Might not be easy to go back to work after getting your lips done. <laughs> Because we want to keep the structure of where it was placed, your little homework is this. Basically, you place a Q-tip in the center of your lips, and then you squeeze your lips up and around that Q-tip like that. 
basically what it does is it just kind of keeps that M shape definition in the center portion of your lips. And you do that over the first couple of days while the product is kind of gelling and molding. So it's like really the next simple. two to three days? Yeah, two to three okay. days, whenever you think about it. And just a little it. bit, a squeeze around, yep. around yep. the cupid. The rest of it, you know, everything's nice and even throughout, I would, I would leave it alone. Okay, great. Let me give you a little ice pack and then you're ready to go. And what else can you do for um, swelling and bruising? I know um, Arnica is- Arnica, you know, actually has really limited um, research on how well it works, but people swear by it. One of my favorite things is bromelain, actually. Mm -hmm. I always tell patients go home and eat some pineapple. Bromelain is, it breaks down bruises a little bit quicker. That does have some clinical um, support behind it. And icing in the first 24 hours really, and it mostly immediately in the first hour or two after, it helps the most. It helps with the swelling. Um, it contracts the blood vessels. Staying away from alcohol and anything that thins the blood. So alcohol, aspirin, fish oils. Um, vitamin E, those things tend to thin the blood and can lead to more bruising. Same with exercise. Exercising, obviously, um, your heart rate is increased, so your blood vessels dilate, which means you bleed a little bit more mm -hmm. and it, it, it'll cause um, um, volume expansion in, a, in, in an area where you had a little bit of trauma. So do the workout beforehand rather Absolutely. than after? What's important for someone that's considering injectables? I think it's important to, to know at first why it is that you want that injectable. Is it because you saw someone in a magazine that had something done? Um, there, there's a psychological component to it and I think that understanding why it is that you want or feel that you need that procedure is the first thing to think about. And secondly is obviously whoever you select, you know, what, what is their background? Um, I'm a PA, um, which stands for Physician Assistant. Um, this is my practice. I have a wonderful medical director supporting me. And my, you know, challenge is that my background is aesthetics and you know, I have pa patients that will say, well, you're not a doctor. Well, the important thing is that I've been educated, I'm a clinical trainer in this specialty area and nobody learns this stuff in medical school. PA school, medical school, nursing school, it's pretty rare that you actually learn it in school unless you take some specialty training. I happen to be one of those people that teaches that specialty training. So you train doctors, mm -hmm. right? Yep, through Galderma, um, through some private companies. Um, I teach all over the United States. It's one of the most fun things about my practice. And I think it's important to know what you're having injected into your body. If you were going to uh, have a surgery, you'd have a lot of questions, right? Well, it's the same thing, yeah. it's a procedure. I mean, that would be my advice mm -hmm. to all of you is, you know, to find someone that you feel comfortable with that walks you through the procedure. Because when you're sitting here and getting injected, like so many things could be running through your head. Yeah, and you want to be com comfortable. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So what you did today, how much would this regularly cost? I tend to charge by the amount of product that I use. Mm -hmm. um, it, and it can be anywhere from $600 um, to eight to nine hundred dollars on average um, for a lip treatment. It really depends on how much product is used, which product is used. Some products, you know, don't last as long, so I charge accordingly. Um, but it really just depends. There's a range. Some people, you know, their lips take a little bit more time. There's not and some people need a little bit more or a exactly. little less. Exactly. Okay. We try to keep our pricing pretty fair. We we don't do any advertising. One person loves what they had done, and then they send someone else. And if somebody's really happy with something, they're going to speak to other people, and then those people are going to become your clients as well. And I think it's the strongest um, way to build a business. So there you have it. It's actually pretty easy. Uh, I Filming this probably took longer than <laughs> than the actual appointment uh, normally takes. I'm going to show you a couple shots later today and then tomorrow so you can see how the swelling goes down and how everything looked. So thanks for joining us. Are you getting notified about my newest videos? The best way to make that happen is to watch this tutorial that's playing. So what you wanna do is go to your subscriptions tab on your YouTube dashboard, look for my channel, hit that little bell right there. And what that bell is gonna do is it's gonna pop up a box that allows you to confirm that you wanna see my videos as soon as I post them. Thanks so much for doing that and for watching. There's so much, much more over at MsFit.com and make sure to follow me on my social handles shown below.